Hello everyone, today me and Louis Pilgrim are going to be showing you 10 different tricks and skills you should learn on your mountain bike. I'm on a regular mountain bike, Louis is on his e-bike, this is to show you that these can be used on any type of mountain bike that you choose to ride. We're going to start things off very simply with one of the best looking and easiest tricks. This is the wheelie. So for the wheelie, I've put my seat up a little bit. Once you get used to it, you won't need to do this. But you want to be in a low gear, power, lean back. And as long as your arms are straight like this, you'll be able to get up. If you like that, it's really hard because your weight's too far forward. If you're struggling with the wheelie from a sitting down position, you can start standing up and just lunge into it like that. And if you're a smaller person, that's going to help you out. But the most important thing really is the arm straight and a low gear, and you'll get the front wheel in the air. Make sure that you keep your finger over the rear brake, because if you go too far, you're going to pull that brake to bring the front back down. If you don't pull that, you'll just flip over and land on your back, and that's going to suck, especially on concrete. Right, this is skill number two, which is the cutty. You're going to need a berm like this. And it's one of my favourite things to do on the trail. You've probably seen it in videos before. It's basically hitting a berm completely wrong. It looks really stylish, but it doesn't really do anything for your speed. So probably don't do it in the middle of your race run. I'm going to get up there now, show you what a normal berm smash looks like, and then a cutty. So that was a normal berm hit. Basically, it's going to be way quicker doing it like that, just following the berm normally. For a cutty, though, you're going to want to cut off the entrance of the berm, hit it kind of at the midpoint, and it should look something like this. Cut the entrance and pump. So that was a cutty. As you can see, I'm aiming for the middle part of the berm, pumping as hard as I can just as I get to the berm. Back wheel loses grip. Fires look sick if you're going to be filming stuff, so you should definitely do that down in the trail for some fun. And um, yeah, it's pretty sick. So we're going to move on to skill number three. Number three, this is pumping, pretty fundamental part of mountain biking. This is a roller here, and if you were to hit it full speed and didn't know how to pump, you'd just hit it like a jump, which obviously wouldn't be very good and you won't be able to keep your speed up. I'm going to show you now with a bit of pumping skills, you can maintain speed and not die. Woo. As you can see here in the slow-mo, I'm approaching the pump bump and as I get to it, I'm preparing and then I'm letting my bike come up into me as I go over it. That's going to keep my speed and stop me from getting air and then when I get slowly starting coming over it I can push my weight back down with my bars and my legs and that's going to keep the bike planted on the floor then you can look ahead and then carry on down the rest of the trail this can be used in between jumps this same motion of coming down compressing can actually give you speed in between jumps the best place to start learning it would be at a pump track you'll know when you're fully dialed because you can go around a pump track without having to pedal at all so we're now going to move on to the next skill for skill number four i'm going to show you the difference between racing and boosting a jump which is terms you may have heard before I'm more of a racer, so I'm going to be showing you that option, and Sam's going to be showing you the boost option. This is what racing a jump looks like. I'm coming up the lip now, and as I get to the top of it, I'm pushing my bike through the jump and lifting it up to my body whilst trying to stay as low to the ground as possible. This is a real good way to hold your speed and go a lot further on jumps, which is good for racing. As you can see there, that was much higher. And I'm still pulling the bike up to me, but in a different way. I'm approaching the jump with actually a little more speed. The more speed you have, the higher you're gonna go. As my front wheel starts coming up top of the lip, I'm really pulling high on the front. And then as the front wheel leaves, I'm then tucking up with the back. In this one, I don't suck up into a ball. I'm just showing you how you can get that extra pop just by the way you leave the lip. 
there we go it's a nice bit of height if you're going to do some tricks now i'm going to do with exactly the same speed my version of racing the jump so you can really see the difference for those of you out there that have messaged me in the past that is how you get more height on a jump more speed get some extra pop off the lip and then you saw on the second go there that if you push through in the way Louis said and kind of like pumping you can go a lot faster which helps you keep your speed which is why that's called racing a jump and the other way is boosting a jump let's move on to number five so skill number five is the stoppy, which I'm sure you all know and have seen before. It's a real fun little trick to do. So the best place to start learning a stoppy on is a relatively steep bank like this. Better to do it on a grass one, because if you crash, it's going to be a softer landing. And the way to do a stoppy is you're going to want to sort of preload and pop slightly over the bars and then you're going to want to start feathering the front brake you want to get it sort of to a point where if you pulled it any harder it would lock up and you'd go over the bars and if you do it any less than that you'll find that you're not going to be able to hold the weight over the front wheel so you just come in bit of a bounce front brake and down you go once you've got the basics of the stoppy down and really get yourself familiar with the front brake control you can then hit things with speed and actually do them on the flat ground look at this I can do it on flat and then link into this hill for an ultimate stoppy bonus stoppy let's get to the next one Number six, I'm gonna show you how to do a 180 on a mountain bike. There is actually two ways to do a 180. So I'm gonna show you the way I like to do and I'm gonna show you the other way afterwards. That is with a bit of a J-hop. So I've got a bit of compression, turn, you see? So it's all about that turn at the start. I'm, because of the suspension, I'm compressing in starting to turn and you come up pull up on the front release your body to spin it round then as your back wheel leaves the floor you can really continue that rotation the other way you can do it is with full-on bunny hop both wheels off the ground at the same time you need to wind up before you do it turn and then hop both wheels at the same time this isn't as good, and if you're gonna go faster and start doing more tricky things, the first option with the J-hop is definitely the way to go. So once you've done a 180, you're facing the wrong way, and one of the most fun things to do on a bike is ride backwards. To start things off with the fake, you should find a small slope, even this size is enough, just to see what it feels like to go backwards. Another way you can get into it is off your front with a pivot like this usually you'll spin out like that because of the momentum of the turn into it which is actually a good thing because you can't keep going backwards forever so once you've done a 180 you'll already have that feeling of coming back to straight so you can 180 like this and then eventually you'll be able to do that number eight the hop to manual can be used anywhere so a lot of guys are doing recently landing jumps in manual um, i like to use it out on the streets to hop up a curb landing manual um, so you can start this off just on the grass like this you can hop and land in a manual like that that is a fundamental skill you're going to need if you want to do jump to manual or hop up something to a manual so the best place to do it is on a flat bit of ground grass is nice because if you crash it's not going to hurt there's a little takeoff over there in the grass i'm going to do a big jump and land in manual to show you how fun it is there's our manual number nine this is the nose bonk this is absolutely awesome you can use this all around the bike park, your trails, or out in the streets. As you can see, the nose bonk is a very simple trick, and you can use it on any obstacle you desire. The best way to learn the nose bonk is actually just off a curb like this. 
and I'm going to approach my desired object, which is a curb. I'm not going to use the front brake. You then hop forwards like that. So it's the motion of going onto the front wheel and you just place your wheel where you want it, bonking your desired object. And that is it, it's as simple as that. So get out there and get bonking. For the final skill of the video, we're at a relatively steep berm for this sort of area and I'm gonna be showing you the Scando flick. And it's basically where you approach a berm, you're gonna to wanna to skid your back wheel out the opposite way to the berm and then lean in and hit it normally. And if you're going quick enough and it's on a steep enough hill, you can sometimes actually hit yourself with your own fire, which is pretty fun. So I'm gonna show you what one looks like now flick the wrong way and in and then you did a really awesome berm smash let's get scandy oh that's so cool i love that such a simple thing but just feels epically fun so the next time you're out riding your local trails think slightly outside the box i mean hit one way hit the next whatever just get out there and have some fun i hope these 10 tips have helped you in some way and if they didn't help i hope you've at least enjoyed it that is the end of the video hope you guys enjoyed it that'd be awesome if you leave some comments and we sick if you subscribe see you in the next one <laughs>